as we consider your youth day, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 33 to 37, it's where David wants to fight Goliath. The Bible tells us, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. So on this morning, I simply want to say you're just a youth. You're just a youth. You may be seated. Saul said that to David. You're just a youth. So when I was preparing this sermon, I read across an interesting article. It was an article out of West Germany. The heading read, Eight-year-old goes on highway joyride with mom's car. <laughs> I tell you, I giggled as I continued to read. The, the, the article said, police said, an eight-year-old boy took his mom's car and went for a nighttime joyride on a highway in western Germany. They said the boy's mother called the police early last Wednesday after she noticed that both her son and her Volkswagen car was missing. <laughs> the mother and police, they eventually found that the boy, he was on the highway, he stopped at a highway service area, parked the car, turned on the hazard lights, and put up the warning triangle because he was uncomfortable once he hit 87 miles per hour on the highway. <laughs> so this baby got out of the car, parked it. He seems he was pretty familiar. The mom said that the boy regularly drives go-karts and bumper cars and has in the past practiced driving a real car on private property. The legal driving age for people in Germany is 18 years old. So then this little boy's actions were inappropriate because he was just a youth. This eight-year-old had no business driving a car. Now, young people, you know that there are many things that you cannot do because you are just a youth. Until you're of age, you can't drive. Until you're of age, you can't have your own place. Young people, I, I mean, you're just a youth. You can't stay up right late on a school night. Many of you here on this morning, you have to go to class in the morning, so you can't stay up late because you're just a youth. You can't have friends over whenever you want because you're just a youth. All right. All right, good. Well, in the Bible, David was told that he was just a youth. David was under 20 years old. We know this because he was not fighting in Israel's army. All males 20 years and up fought in Israel's army. If you go to Numbers chapter 1 verse 3, it says, from 20 years old and upward, all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, thou and Aaron shall number them by their armies. So from this, we gather that David in this text is under 20 years old. His brothers were at war. His brothers were fighting in the army. Oh, but not young David. Uh, for he was just a youth. All right. But I tell you, although David was young, there was a threat of a giant in his world. Right. Yeah. You see, the giant Goliath would not only affect the adults, yeah. but that trouble would spill over to this young man. Yeah. You see, trouble does not care about your age. Right. When the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he doesn't ask to see your ID. When the he doesn't ask you when your next birthday is. When trouble comes, trouble doesn't hand out excused absences in the form of some form based on age. You see, don't doubt the goal of the enemy. 
And don't doubt your need to face giants at any age. Young people, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. You will face the giant of peer pressure. Even this school year, you will face the giant of someone trying to convince you to try drugs and alcohol. You will face the giant of someone trying to get you to have sex at a young age. Young people, trouble doesn't care about your age. Trouble will come and you'll face the giant of low self-esteem. You'll face the giant of social expectations and academic expectations, but there's something you can do when the giant comes. That's the good news on this morning. God has equipped believers with something that you can do when giants come. So then it's not so much about your age, but it's about your strategy. But, 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 but understand that when the giants come, you're going to face some doubters. Some won't believe that you have what it takes to defeat the giant. Saul was like that in this text. He doubted David. But before we jump on Saul, let's consider the facts. Perhaps Saul was the way that he was towards David. He doubted David because standing before him was a boy. You know, that's just a child. That child. You, you know that child that doesn't have to pay bills. That's just a boy. You know that child that all they have to do is play around. That's just a boy. Perhaps Saul was the doubt because how would David make out? He was just a boy. But not only that, the other fact that Saul may have considered is the fact that David's frontal lobe was not fully developed. Now I understand that when it comes to human development, there is something called the frontal lobe in right there in your brain. That is the area of the brain that involves judgment and problem solving. So the rational part of a child's brain is not fully developed until about age 25. We said David was under 20 years old. So maybe Saul thought, like many adults, uh, the adults we think with our prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain, the rational part, the part of the brain that responds to situations with good judgment and an awareness of the consequences. But David was under 20 years old. So maybe Saul thought, teenagers, you know, they process with their amygdala. The amygdala is the area of the brain that has to do with emotions. Maybe this boy is just emotional. Oh, I can defeat Goliath. Strong enough. You know, sometimes young people get emotional. But but the fact is, Saul, is that David had God on his side. Yeah. And what adults have to remember is that you're not the only one that's serving the Lord. Children serve the Lord too. You're not the only one that's trying to be Christ-like. Children are trying to be Christ-like too. You're not the only one that is courageous. Our children are courageous. Saul's support. Young people need the support of adults. Stop thinking about what they cannot do. And start encouraging them that they can do all things through Christ who strengthens them. It doesn't matter if you're short. It doesn't matter if you're tall. It doesn't matter what you think is hindering you because of God. You may not be able, but God is able. Young people need our support. They're facing giants nowadays that some of us never had to face. You don't know what it's like to be cyber bully at 12 years old. First thing, you're not 12. Second thing, you may not even know how to work a computer. They face giants that some of us never had to face. But when you face your giant, there will be those who will doubt you. This child, David, what I like about him is that he had a testimony. You might doubt this child, but this child had a testimony based on his experience. And a child's testimony is powerful if we give them an opportunity to give it. A child's testimony is powerful if we sit down and listen to our young people. A child's testimony. You can hear things from a child that you perhaps have never heard from or don't never heard yourself. These children hear the Lord too. This child had a testimony. David said, I've kept my 
my father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear, Saul, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after it. I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. This is David's testimony, a child's testimony. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. We ought to celebrate young people's accomplishments. Do that. 
2019. I can't be your best. I can pray for you. I even wrote a book, but you have to be your very best. And be like David. Because in the text, what we find is that David acknowledged the power of God. He talked about what he did, but, but, but he said, the Lord. His decision to even go out and face this giant was based not on man's sin, but on God's sin. He said, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the money. I have a good memory. The Lord delivered me out of the paw of the bear. I have a good memory. Right. So he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine Goliath. Yeah. That's history right there. Yes, history in your time with the Lord. Yeah. And young people, you'll go to school and you'll learn a lot of history. But your history with God counts most. Yeah. And the older people in here, you know what I'm talking about. Because you've got good history with God. Somebody said down through the years. The Lord's been good to me. That's history. Down through the years. The Lord's been good to me. Somebody was sick and he healed this body of God. That's history. The Lord's been good to me. He healed this body of God. The Lord's been good to me. I've been sick and he healed me. I was broke and he provided for me. I was alone and he was my friend. I was afraid and he was my peace. So then, after all of that, Saul says, go. Go. And in 2019, it's time for some of us to go. It's time for some of us to go. We've been in the same place for a long time. But you got to get up before you go. So let me say it's time, 2019, to get up and go. Go face the giant in your life. And if you're hesitant, then you need to remember the rich history, American history. Yeah. If you feel hesitant, then you need to remember that there was a door of bondage between Harriet and freedom. But you got up because it was time to go. Know the history. There was a door of hate between Dr. King and love. But he had to get up and he had to go. Remember the history. There was a door of division between Malcolm and Justice. But he had to get up and he had to go. Remember the history. There was a door of this has never happened before between Barack and the White House. Just. Yes. 
Yeah. <laughs>